All right, so after covering how to use the Actionable Agile tool in some depth, uh, some folks had some questions about installing the plugin and how to actually get it set up, how to load the data. So we're gonna do a quick video that runs through all of that. So as usual, you're gonna to need to have admin access uh, in Jira to be able to do this. So you might need to go and bribe your IT person, do whatever you gotta do. Uh, once you've got that access though in Jira, you're gonna to go to settings, you're going to go uh, to apps and you're gonna look in the marketplace, you're gonna find a new app, you're gonna search for actionable agile, should be the first one. Apparently it's cloud fortified, whatever that means. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and open that up. Uh, it's got a free trial, uh, free, free for a month, and then it's 10 bucks um, per user, I believe, uh, that you have in your Jira instance uh, after the free trial. So we're gonna go ahead and try it for free. So start free trial. Looks like it's being added. I guess that takes a second. All right, looks like it's there. Your app has been added to your instance and is ready to use. So let's go back over uh, to our instance. All right, so we're back in our Jira instance. And uh, basically where this is gonna show up is on the left-hand side here, uh, closer to the bottom, you're gonna see Actionable Agile. It really doesn't matter what board you're in, doesn't matter what you're looking at in Jira, it's always gonna be there on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and open up Actionable Agile. Uh, it'll bring us to this. Awesome, thank you. Let's not do that right now. And um, even though we are in Actionable Agile um, through Jira, the first bit of data you're gonna see is still just example data. So it still loads it with just fake data so you can kind of figure out how to use the tool. So we still need to actually load our Jira data. Even though it's a Jira plugin, we still need to go and load our Jira data into the tool. So why don't we go ahead and create a new data set right up here. We're gonna click this drop down. We're gonna say create a new data set. We're gonna give it a name. We'll call this our test data set. Um, and then it lets you pick what data you wanna use from Jira to, uh, to build your, your charts. There's a few different ways to do this. You can just grab data right off of a board. So if you've got everything loaded into a board, you can say, give me everything from the, uh, call it the SP board. I think I've got some data in there. Uh, but you can also do this by project or you can also do a custom filter. So if you build your own filter in Jira, let's say you're trying to look at flow metrics you know, across a bunch of different boards or across a bunch of different projects for whatever reason, you can build a filter in Jira and you can point the tool at that filter. So right off the bat, there's some optional uh, filters that we can use. We can say, give us only issues created after a certain date or issues resolved after a certain date. Um, for my purposes, I'm just gonna leave this all the way to the beginning of time because I don't have a ton of data to begin with. Um, I generally exclude subtasks just because I don't really care to measure that stuff. Uh, but if you do want to keep it there, you would uncheck that. Now it's not letting me hit next here. And I think the reason is the board I picked actually has no issues or no issues found. So that's not going to work. Let's find a board that actually has some data in it. I think this one probably does. 20 unique issues. Perfect. That'll work. Um, so I'm going to pick everything from my SSP board uh, from Jira. I'm going to hit the next button. It's going to start loading the data. And uh, now it shows us the workflow that we have. And mine is pretty simple. So this is, there's not really much for me to do here. However, um, if you have a more complex workflow or if you're pulling data from multiple projects that have different workflows, you may have to do a little bit of mapping work. So basically what you can do is drag the Jira statuses um, into different columns uh, to make it make a little bit more sense for you. My, in my case, this is very simple. So I'm just gonna leave it all um, as is. Um, if I needed to add columns, so if I had multiple statuses in the same column that I wanted to split out, you can go ahead and add a workflow column to that. I'm not gonna do it here. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next. Um, and so this is where, if you want to be able to blend this data with your story point estimates, if you're doing story point estimates, which by the way, you shouldn't, but if you are, um, this is where you want to uh, add that field. So from the drop down, you're gonna pick story points, which is I guess the custom field for some reason. We're gonna add that field. And now we see it down here under selected data. So what that means is when it pulls all, all of the data from Jira into the tool, it's gonna to take all the default data, plus it's gonna grab the story point data for each of our issues. So let's go ahead and hit finish. Now we should have a nice chart, not a ton of data, right? This was uh, just a made up project that, that I did, but at least uh, now everything is loaded and we're, we're ready to go. So we've got the data loaded now, but there are a few 
uh, landmines here to be aware of. Because if you just load the data and start looking at the charts kind of blindly, uh, you may be getting a bit of a warped view of things. So the first thing you want to do is uh, adjust some of the controls here on the right-hand side uh, for the for all of the charts. Right, You want to do this for all of our charts so we don't have to do this uh, change for, for every chart that we want to look at. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the workflow stages. And so we are looking at cycle time here, right? Cycle time scatter plot. And what I'm interested in is I want to understand how long things take from the moment they go to in development, right? From the moment we start working on them. So I actually need to come here and uncheck this to do uh, stage here, because if I leave it checked, it's going to start the clock from the minute uh, a ticket was actually created. Right, and that's not necessarily what we want to measure. Sometimes you do want to measure that, and you know that's not a bad thing. We should understand how old all of our stuff is. But for my purposes, I only want to understand uh, cycle time in terms of how long it takes to actually get stuff done from the moment we start working on it. So I'm going to uncheck the to-do workflow stages, and that'll give me a bit of a more accurate read on uh, how long how long things are taking to to actually get done. Now the other uh, area where there are many landmines is uh, the item filter that we have here because we can filter the items that show up on our board. And if we leave it by default, it's gonna pick up everything. It's gonna show us data for everything as if it was all the same. So there's a few things we wanna look at in the item filter um, section here. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is my issue type filter, okay? Um, in this case, I only have bugs and stories in my project. So that might make sense. I might wanna keep those uh, both on the chart. However, if I'm doing some analysis on just, you know, how long it takes us to respond to bugs, I might say, just give me the bugs and don't give me the stories, right? In my case, I want to click both of these. Um, another thing to watch out for here is especially if your team or your, your organization is using epics in Jira, you might want to filter those out, right? You might not want to include the data of your epics because, of course, your epic cycle time is going to be longer than the story. It's going to skew your, your data. So you'd want to come here and deselect that if, uh, if that was the case. You might also want to just look at the data only for your epics, right? There's some interesting analysis you can do there. So same thing, you would come here and just select uh, epics. So that's one issue to watch out for here in the uh, issue type filter. The other one that I find is constantly an issue with companies is around the uh, resolution field. So again, mine is a simple project. I only have either a blank resolution or done, as in like we close the ticket and it's done. Uh, many teams will also use another resolution for things that are uh, invalid or you know things that we're not gonna fix, You know something that was added and then we decided we're not gonna do it. So we closed it out with a resolution of like won't fix or won't do or something like that. And if that's the case, you're gonna wanna filter those out as well, right? Because if we're measuring cycle time of how long it takes us to get things to done, you probably don't want to include the items that we specifically said we are not going to do, right? Depending on how your, your workflow is set up. Uh, so we'd want to come to the resolution section here and do a little bit of filtering there uh, to make sure that we are only looking at things that we uh, completed with the resolution of done. Um, if your Jira instance is set up kind of weird, you might also have things that are done but have a blank resolution. So you might want to pick that there too. So that's it. Now you know how to uh, set up the tool, load your data, do some basic filtering to get some more use out of the tool. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll probably do a future video where we will cover uh, how to load data into Actionable Agile when you are not able to install it as a plugin. So there is a standalone version of Actionable Agile that you can get. Um, it'll still um, tie in to Jira. There's a few hoops, hoops that you need to jump through uh, to get to that point. So we'll, uh, we'll cover that in the future and uh, then you'll be all set. All right, see you next time.